our objective is we're going to talk all about this new concept called phasers. We're going to talk about how when you add cosines and sines together, you can go back and forth between that representation and cosine and, and an angle. We're going to talk about what phasers are from an intu intuition standpoint. And then we'll hit it from the math standpoint. This is the only lesson that I'm going to talk about how to use your calculator. And last, we'll talk about applications of phasers. So let me begin by talking about what we did last time. And I'm going to approach it slightly differently. Last time, we talked about converting between two forms of sinusoids. We're going to define them as being perfect cosines with no phase component, perfect sines with no phase component, both the same frequency, both omega frequency. And we are going to somewhat arbitrarily say we're going to subtract the sine from the cosine. And how much of these things are there? There's A of sine and there's minus B. I'm sorry, there's A of cosine and there's minus B of sine. And we can go back and forth between this representation and this alternative representation. where it's some amount of cosine where we're going to add some angle. And the key picture to go back and forth between these two representations is going to be this graph, where this is our amount of A, our positive cosine, and this is our amount of B, our amount of minus sine. Let's say we've got this, three cosine of 7t minus four sine of 7t. So given this, uh, Jonathan, tell me what our A is and our B is. Uh, the A would be three and B uh, would be seven. And B is what? Seven. No. Sorry, four, negative four? Yeah, so that's the question. That, this, the seven, is our omega, and they have to be the same for this to work. But the question is, is B positive four or negative four with this representation? Isn't it negative four? So if we're representing it as some amount of positive A cosine minus some amount of negative B sine, just, just match these terms. A goes to positive three minus B goes to negative four. So therefore, B is equal to... Positive four. Positive. Positive four. Well, I'm sorry. I'm kind of lost. I'm a little lost in that for a second, maybe because my visuals aren't working. But um, so essentially, from so essentially, you're plotting. Okay, never mind. Match them like this. Here we go. Okay. Everything no, I, that's I, cosine that's outside of your your cosine matches, and everything that's outside of your sine matches. Okay, I I can see how it makes sense in the graph. I can see that. Great. So now we've got this, now we can plot this location on our graphs. We've got an A of three and we've got a B of four. And so we've got this alternative representation. And so we call this entire section here, we call this rectangular because we can make a rectangle out of our A and B. And similar, we can call this polar because we can say that our C is how, if this is our A amount and if this is our B amount, our C amount is the hypotenuse, is how far our sine cosine mix is away from the origin and our theta is the angle it makes to the positive x-axis. And so you can see, you can go back and forth 
with them because our C, just by Pythagorean's theorem, is going to be this. And our theta is going to be uh, inverse tangent of B over A. And then to that, because there's always a, a problem with branch cuts, you have to add 180 degrees if your A is negative. So this is how you can go from rectangular form to polar form. And so in this particular example, we can say that three and four maps to five by this. And our angle, you can see it's greater than 45 degrees. It turns out to be about 53 degrees, exactly using the tangent negative one of four thirds. And so that is how you can go back and forth. This shows how you can go from rectangular to polar, and you can solve it the opposite way to go from polar to rectangular. And that's what your text will say. But what I'm going to tell you is that it's the polar form that's the most important. So you're always going to want to strive to get it in this form in electrical engineering. Any questions on that review? All right. Uh, Shoot. Okay. I am a little confused about how the um the only thing I would be confused on was maybe the um, a equals c cosine b equals c sine. I mean, I kind I get the idea behind it. For a, well, the question was how would you get from a co a equals c cosine b equals c sine? I mean, that's basically arithmetic or something else you did. We used we used this equation. Okay, that makes, okay, that makes more sense. Or, but don't memorize the equation. What I want you to do is to really just see the, the visual. And then it's just the high school okay. shape. Okay. Comes from. 